our next set of notes uh, move into acceleration. And acceleration, uh, strictly defined, is the rate of change of velocity. Um, in essence, it describes how quickly an object's velocity is changing per amount of time. Um, so velocity on one hand is the rate of change of distance covered, while acceleration tells us how quickly the velocity changes. Um, sometimes it gets a little confusing, but we are going to go through those differences. Um, now notice acceleration though is specifically the rate of change of velocity. And we spent a good time the other day going the difference between velocity and speed. So something can accelerate um, one of three ways. If it's getting faster, secondly, if it's getting slower, and the third way, which we won't cover too much in this set of notes, is, is if it changes direction. All right, so we can get acceleration in these three instances. Okay? Today we're only going to deal with getting faster and slower. Because okay? we're only in one dimensional motion, which means we're going in along one line, so we're not changing direction yet. Move across to the next slide. Um, so if we had an object that came moving along, same speed, same direction, right? there's uh, no velocity change, so its acceleration would be nothing. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if an object slowed down, in this case abruptly, we sometimes say that it is decelerating, right? so that's when it's losing its speed. Now the formula for acceleration, we have some Greek letters in here. These. Uh, these triangles right here, you say them as delta. It's the Greek letter delta. So acceleration here is delta V over delta T. Okay, we're here. A stands for acceleration. Right? T, this is our change in time or our time interval in, measured in seconds. Uh, lastly, delta V is the change in velocity. Right? So we need to know what the velocity is. Uh, final velocity, as well as the initial velocity. Sometimes we like to be a little bit uh, lazy here and just put a subscript F for final and a subscript I for initial. Okay. As I said before, right, this triangle is the Greek letter delta and it means change it. Uh, you may have you, you probably will see it again in chemistry when you talk about changes in temperature. You'll see delta again. That up. Now looking at the units, right? So we looked at units of speed already and time and distance. The typical metric unit for acceleration is referred to as meters per second squared. It describes the change in velocity each second uh, you'll read it as meters per second squared. Sometimes you'll see it written as meters per second per second. Uh, because notice, right, change in velocity has units of meters per second. Let me highlight this, right, has units of meters per second. And then we're dividing by a time interval. So we're dividing by another set of time units. So as an example, um, a car goes from rest to 90 kilometers per hour in 10 seconds. What's its acceleration? Well, if we run through the problem here, right, identify our information, right, our change in velocity is 90 kilometers per hour, the time interval is 10 seconds, right, uh, acceleration formula, change in velocity over time. Notice here, without doing any unit conversions, we're in kilometers per hour and our time intervals in seconds. So if we don't want to deal with any uh, unit conversion, we can still do this problem. 90 divided by 10 is 9. So our rate of change here is we're picking up not or we're losing 9 kilometers per hour every second. Right? So if I were to go through this, that means that right at the beginning when time is zero, 
our speed is 90 kilometers per hour. So if we're losing nine kilometers per second, after one second, our speed would be down to 81. After two seconds, the speed would be down to 72, and so forth, until we get to 10 seconds, our velocity will have reached nothing, right? Zero kilometers per hour, all right? So that's how we can think about it off on the side. Clear this. And so once again, notice the units. Whoop. Um, you're it's nine kilometers per hour per second. Okay. Here's another example. Uh, U.S. Air Force conducted uh, research to see how much acceleration a pilot could handle. They put a guy on a sled at this ridiculous speed of 1,020 kilometers per hour and brought him to rest in only 1.4 seconds, okay? So think of the rate of change in velocity in that experiment. So if we actually run through that to figure out what the acceleration is, right? Here's the problem again. Um, we need to find and identify our key information like we did with our speed problems, right? So 1,020 kilometers per hour is our initial velocity. 1.4 seconds is the time pit interval over which the speed changes. And although the number zero is not actually stated in the problem, the person comes to a halt, which means they stop. So that would mean the final velocity is nothing or zero. Mm -hmm. The acceleration here is our unknown, and we know what its formula is. But if we want to have our metric units of meters per second squared, we're going to have to convert our original speed, which is 1,020 kilometers per hour, and we're going to have to use our unit conversions, right, our unit conversion fractions, to turn it into meters per second, right? If you set it up correctly, your hours will cancel, minutes, uh, and also your kilometers to get to meters per second. So in this particular example, right, we are losing, right? Notice final minus initial. Uh, our final is nothing. Our initial is something. So we get a negative number there. And we get a, an acceleration of negative 202 meters per second squared. The negative just tells us that we are in the process of losing speed, that it is a deceleration. Um, sometimes. Uh, we refer to these cases in terms of g's. The acceleration due to gravity is roughly 10 meters per second squared. So this person would have been experiencing roughly 20 g's of acceleration. Clear this. Now, main question here is most students are going to confuse the quantities of velocity and acceleration. Hopefully this question kind of illustrates the difference. Uh, when you fly in an airplane, uh, you go at speeds of roughly 500 miles per hour. If you were moving at a constant 500 miles per hour, the question is, do you have a large velocity? Do you have a large acceleration? Well, you guys can argue over what's fast, but I would say that you know, 500 miles per hour is a large velocity. Acceleration, though, in this case, our acceleration is zero, all right, because there is no change in velocity. It is staying the same. Now, there is a special case of acceleration, and that's for objects that are in free fall. These are objects um, in which the only force acting upon them is gravity. Uh, we're going to learn about this later. That's what's referred to as an object's weight. Uh, so all objects, when dropped, pick up speed. And if there's no air resistance, they pick up speed at a rate of roughly 9.8 meters per second each second. And that is what is referred to as g. Right, so this value of 9.8 meters per second squared is known as a G. 
Okay, so a lot of times we'll round it, makes the math easier. We'll just say it's 10 meters per second squared because that makes it easy to multiply tens rather than 9.8s. Move across here. Okay. So as an example, right, if we followed an object in free fall, right, we're not including air resistance right now, if you jumped off of a, a diving board, at the beginning you would have no speed. But if you were in the air for one full second, you would gain 10 meters per second. In the next time of one second, you pick up another 10. Now you'd be going 20, and so forth. Right? So if you know, we were air for three seconds, we'd pick up 30 meters per second of speed. In these problems, you have to be careful with signs, though. Usually up is denoted as positive and down is negative. So if you're really picky about it, um, the quantity of G is sometimes said to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared because objects in free fall pick up velocity in the downward direction. Right? So that's what that negative would signify. Um, in cases where we're talking about horizontal motion, for instance, a car speeding up or slowing down, you can make positive whatever you want it to be. You just need to be consistent and call the opposite direction negative. Right? You don't want to confuse them. So in this case, we might say to the left is positive, so the velocity is, is positive. And if this case they were slowing down, their acceleration would be negative or to the right. Okay? So there are two arrows that designate directions. So you can kind of see here, acceleration is also a vector quantity because not only does it have magnitude, but it also has a direction. Things can accelerate up, down, left, right, to the northeast, all right, as examples. We'll clear this. Here's another example of throwing an object up into the air. Notice that when an object moves upward, right, gravity is acting against it. So it loses 10 meters per second each second as it rises. Once it gets to the top, then it starts to gain um, speed downward at 10 meters per second each second. It's always gaining speed in the down direction. So you know, when it's moving up, it's losing speed. And when it's going down, it's gaining speed. All right, sometimes that will confuse people. Um, but another key thing is at the very top of this motion, right, the acceleration is still 10 meters per second squared. Gravity does not cease when an object reaches what's called a zenith point, which is at the very top of this motion. Now, um, there are distances that we have to worry about here, but the key thing is that the distance is proportional to the square of time. So here's a second equation for you. For an object in free fall, the distance can be found by taking half of acceleration due to gravity multiplied by the time squared, which kind of makes sense because if an object is getting faster and faster, it will pick up more distance as it's faster. So in the first second of fall, an object is only going to fall about five meters. But if it's in the air for a full two seconds where it can ramp up in speed, if you throw the numbers in there, you'll see it almost goes 20 meters, right? So notice the distance that it covers is exploding, meaning that it's not just going up, you know, linearly, right? Time is doubled, but the distance actually quadruples. It doesn't double as well. Right? Big difference. Right. Now, free fall is whenever we don't have air resistance. We kind of talked about this the other day. But lots of times things do have air resistance. They would not fall at G. Right? We're not going to worry about those situations right now. Uh, we're going to skip this. I can show this to you later. This is not a big deal for the video, especially because we're running out of time. But the pages that correspond to this topic is pages 26 through 30. Hope this was a good one for you and that you don't have that many questions.